Welcome back to Forensic Education. I'm Mike McCutcheon and today I'm going to show you an inexpensive way to super glue fume if you don't have access to other materials. Now normally when we super glue fume you would use a um, your coffee cup warmer or this is for mobile fuming um, a coffee cup warmer or a candle warmer you're going to put your tray on here put your super glue in and then that heat is going to turn the cyanoacrylate into fumes which will stick to your fingerprint and then you can fingerprint I have lots of other videos on that so check those out um, if you want to learn how to do that if you don't have a, uh, a power you can also use a hot shot Hot Shot is a self-contained unit. It has an activator packet. It has a um, the canister that has the metal on the top, and your super glue is going to go on top here. That's going to heat, and that's going to fume. And this fumes for several several minutes. This fumes amazing, but sometimes you don't have those either. Sometimes your department won't uh, purchase those. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make these cotton balls and I should have put gloves on. I absolutely hate it when my hands get super glue, super glue on them. But what we can do with these, I'm gonna hold that out. We got that. is you can make a very cheap alternative uh, to these products that work they work very well especially for a smaller fuming chamber um, I like to use a small box these work really well so let's get to it and I'll show you how to make them all right so we're all set up uh, to make our cotton balls um, it's very very simple all we need is uh, some baking soda our cotton balls water and a towel so what I'm gonna do is I fill my bowl with water. You can use a bucket if it's easier for filming. I just use this so you can see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pour the whole thing of baking soda right in the water. I'm going to mix that up. Now we want it to mix in. No clumps or anything like that. Just gonna mix that up. All right. So now that that's done, we're gonna take our cotton balls. I'm gonna put those in, and now you gotta be careful with this part because what you want is you want them to absorb the water and the baking soda but you don't want them to fall apart. So you have to be really gentle with this. I don't know why I use such cold water. My hands are freezing. All right, so now that I've kind of mixed them around in the slurry, they've soaked up that water with the cotton balls. This is where we got to use our towel. And you're not going to wring these out. That's the important part. Don't wring them out. You're just going to like, gently take them out. We'll let them drain a little bit. And we're going to see if you mix them too much the cotton balls will actually unravel so we don't want that we're going to separate them on our towel like this so now we're going to get that going looking good looking good and then you're just going to do that with the the rest of them you're just going to take them out and let them drain now this is going to, this towel is going to soak up the water pretty fast. It's going to get uh, saturated pretty quick. So then what we'll do is we'll flip those over um, in about an hour or two. We'll flip those onto a dry towel again and then we'll let them continue to dry. So I'm just separating them. 
Um, if you wanted to uh, uh, en enhance the drying or speed along the drying, you could put a fan on them, but it's not really necessary. You wouldn't be doing this in a rush. So if there's no rush, this is the best method. So we're just going to leave those out, let those dry. We'll come check them in about an hour or so, and then um, we'll flip those on to another towel. And then we're going to just complete that process, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so I've waited about an hour. Didn't take too long. This um, towel is absolutely soaked already. So what I'm going to do is I just have another beach towel here. And I'm just going to roll those over onto the beach towel. And then the same thing. I'm just going to spread these out a little bit so that they can dry out. Okay, now that the, the majority of the water um, is soaked, so like you can see this thing is, is, is absolutely soaking wet. It, it really took all of that water out of there. Um, so now these are going to take a little bit longer to uh, dry. So I'm actually going to leave these overnight. We'll come back tomorrow and uh, be able to go ahead and do these. So uh, when I told you you need to um, be really gentle when you're mixing that water because a, a cotton ball is really just a rolled up piece of cotton. So if you're too vigorous when you're trying to mix the cotton balls in the water, you're going to get like... Uh, them to be all rolled out like that and you don't want that so just be real careful when you're mixing them but these are coming along these are coming along really nice um, they're looking pretty good all right so uh, let's wait 24 hours and then we'll see where we are and then we'll test our product and see how we did good all right that's good all right everyone so now what we've done <clears throat> is we've dried these out I can see, or you could see, that you're, um, I, I did change the towel again. So that's two towels that we've changed. Um, there you go. There you go. You can see I changed the towel twice. Um, these are still, this has been uh, two full days, and they're still just a little bit damp. So I wouldn't put them in a Ziploc bag yet, but they're enough where you could put them either... Uh, like gather them up like so. You can put them in a, uh, a paper bag. Once they're completely dry, then I do put them right in a Ziploc bag and they work great. Now to use them, how I would use them is I would put them, uh, a, t a couple of them, in a little tray like this. You're a little loud there, buddy. Okay, so, and then what I would do is I'd take my glue, and you're actually just going to put that in. This would be underneath your hood, or your fuming chamber, and then, we'll put it over here, you can really see that that fuming. You're going to just load a full thing of super glue on here. I didn't have that much left in this, uh... I don't have much left in this one, but you can still see just the little bits that I put on there fuming. Uh, I would put that in, and then you have it. The, the, the downfall of these compared to, um, like, using a hot shot or uh, using the traditional method where you're just going to heat up your, your super glue, oops, uh, the, the, <clears throat> the downfall of it is that this, you'll see, it fumes very fast. It'll give you a lot of fumes really, really fast, and then it's done, and then it's done. This method where you're heating it, it's going to be a nice, slow, and steady burn. You're going to get a lot of fumes on it. Um, using the hot shot, the same thing. This canister continues to put out that heat so it's not all at once, and you're going to get a nice uh, uh, or a long exposure of those fumes. So here... Um, you may want to set up a couple of these, blast a couple of them in a smaller fuming chamber, and then also remember in that fuming chamber, if you put a little fan in there, that's going to work really, really well um, to circulate those fumes, and you can do it. So this is a nice, cheap, mobile way for you to um, 
uh, to create great fuming products um, that you can use out on the scene. It'll make a big difference, a really big difference on your success rate of um, super glue fuming. That's it. That's all I have. Friends, please, you got to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram uh, and YouTube. And most of the stuff I, I put on Instagram as well, but it really does help grow the brand and what we're able to put out for you. So thank you for watching. I'll see you soon and be safe out there. Peace and love.